This was the middle of March, uh, middle of March 2020 was when we connected for a conversation on Dad Awesome. It was in the early 100s, like 114, I think, episode 114, something like that. You joined and you just shared your heart. Yeah. And one thing I came away from that conversation with, there was lots of takeaways, but zeal, mm -hmm. your zeal. Mm -hmm. And it's something we're commanded and invited. Our Heavenly Father says, don't be lacking in zeal. I mean, bring yeah. your full heart to the area. So I was like, Hunger. when I got off the line with you and my girls in the background were making all this noise because it was just like, it was a last minute podcast change up. And we've got our kids actually right through the wall now. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> right so you might, we might be able to hear them now. Yeah. But zeal was like, the conversation was dripping in zeal, just mm -hmm. passion. That's who you are. Yes, amen. You and Sarah, that's who you guys are. Yeah. And uh, thank you for coming around too, to just do another Dad Awesome Absolutely. conversation. As always, man. Thank you so much. Well, I should say thank you for providing such an avenue for men and fathers to be able to be equipped, to feel loved, and to to feel seen. You know, yeah. um, it's it's a powerful, powerful tool. Um, and I, I know it's, it's blessed me. You know, mm -hmm. I even I still wear my socks to this day. Yeah, that you awesome, got the great dad socks. awesome socks. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but it, it's it's great, man. Thank you. So well, much. and God does fun things. We serve a God who is fun. Yeah. And uh, he relocated your family uh, from where you were at. Uh, I think you guys were in Oklahoma, right? And then you're in Indianapolis and then now up in Minnesota. And it's just fun for me. We've added kids since the last conversation. Yeah. Uh, now your uh, your roster is nine strong, the yeah. Yamis, right? Yeah. Well, 10 counting the up pair. <laughs> Oh yes, of course. By God's grace. Yeah, so, which you're, you're fathering in, in, her as well. Oh, most, most yeah. definitely. And that's yeah. one. Of, that was one of the um, the the go aheads. Like we have an, an opportunity to to bring someone else into our fold, mm -hmm. so they can experience um, a, a healthy healthy home and healthy hearts. Yes. You know. So um, we're very excited. And granted, she's a believer from Colombia, um, and she's just she, we love having her because she seriously. Like you could sense her love for the kiddos whenever she's around them. So it's a blessing to have I that. felt that when I walked through the front door. I Are felt that. Yes. Oh, yes. praise God. Uh, so the roster, though, is you've got the au pair who's a young adult through the youngest. The twins are how old now? Six months. Six months. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and your son was in my church small group, so I got a chance yeah, to be his leader, that. which was a gift for me. Absolutely. Um, the the difference between last conversation and now, though, is we've added kids. I've added uh, I've added uh, two daughters since then. No, my my youngest was little then, so I've got yeah. four kids now. So our rosters have both grown. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We've we've both moved because I've been moving around the country a little bit. You guys yeah. moved here. Um, I, Proximity matters, though. So I've gotten to see your family in a closer proximity. Mm -hmm. So when I said last conversation, zeal was like, I was just like, man, I just, I want to be like Moses. I want to bring my full heart to, to mm -hmm. my kids, to my wife. Uh, by the way, I have to shout back to lips, lips, yeah. lips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, um, we were, where were we at the other day? We are somewhere, and, and, and there was the, the um, it was like a little device, and you pressed it, and it said lips. No. And Sarah found it. Yeah. Did you buy and it? She, we did. <laughs> we were in such a hurry. But, but did I'll you at least kiss her at that moment? You Almost must at least kiss her. Yeah. I did. So the, the concept, share it one more time for the guys who didn't listen, of course, so three years So we ago. get so busy with mm -hmm. um, in our everyday life, you mm -hmm. know, with um, with work, with parenting, with uh, you know, just a lot of different things. You know, we get bogged down and sometimes you, you lose sight of what matters the most besides God. Yeah. And that's your partner, the one you started everything with before the kids came in the picture, that's right. you know, um, so... Uh, Sarah and I, whenever we kind of get that in that mode of, man, I need a hug. I need a, I need love. I need something. You know, we just yell out lips, and when you hear lips, you run. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're mad, if you guys are in an argument, if you're dang near down the street, and if you hear that, you run and you express that love, and it's been so magical for us. And who sees? I mean, who sees it? So my girls know about lips because we yeah. we've copied and we've yeah. taken that in to our, our marriage. And it's like, yeah, it, it, it diffuses grumpiness. It diffuses oh, frustration. God. It's what? just like, well, the girls are all watching. They heard someone yelled. So someone actually yeah, moved out of this place of normal life and said, let's bring some spark by yelling <laughs> lips. So thank you for that tangible, <laughs> tangible idea. But that, that actually speaks to that, that concept of zeal as well. But why, why do you think, you know, most families can just get into ruts. Yeah. I, the gravitational pull for my family is to get into a rut of yeah. just living and obligations. And mm -hmm. how would you encourage, start with the Zogs, my family, to like move to live with more passion, bring more life, um, you know, yell lips. Like how would you, how would you encourage just, no, don't settle, bring your full heart. Yeah. I'm all about um, just elevation, you know, um, elevate 
period, in every area of your life, right? And what does that mean? It means reaching new heights, reaching new levels, not being content, not being okay with where you're at in in your relationship, within your parenting, in your 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 personal life, in your um, um, on your in your body. Yeah. You know, it's like elevate no matter what. And when I think of that, I think about just the Father's love. When you're praying, um, I almost got I almost was brought to, to tears because that song, um, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you more than life. It's like even right now, man, God, it's so amazing, you know? Um, and just thinking about how how faithful he is, um, especially currently in my... Sorry, bro. Good, good. <laughs> um, in my wife and I's life, like it's been... Um, it hasn't been peachy, you know? Um, especially traveling the whole world. We lived in like, dude, like 11 different countries and 23 different cities and my wife has just been following me the entire time championing me as i'm reaching out for my goals you know and uh just things just having to bounce around which is great because our whole thing is just obedience and that's on jesus i love you like you take us wherever you want us and we'll go uh but along the way like when you're traveling on the road you know there's potholes you know sometimes you get a flat tire sometimes uh you don't have any gas you know like uh five uh, about five weeks ago, I was about to take the kiddos to a camp, and I forgot the night before that I was supposed to get gas. Oh, no. So I was driving, and I failed to look at the, sure. the yeah, and, and it just died. Shut down. And I was like, oh, no. What do we do? Side of the house. All seven kids <laughs> no. in the car. Yeah. Uh, but thank God we were near the house. I just ran in, got gas and yeah. um, the gas tank. But just to know that life, like so much stuff just hits you with life but one thing stays the same and it's god's love for us right so it's like how dare i uh take time away from the one that created time you know um so it's just 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 that love factor and it's like the the zeal yeah the passion the fire the hunger just the the love uh for him has just been it's just what's been carrying us you know sorry i've been i'm a leaky faucet i I love (laughs) I love when conversations go this way that we know we're, we're dads that need God. Oh God, what? Right. If not, what, how do you get, like, where do you get your hope from? And where does the fire come from? Like that when I said zeal, when I, when you said fire here, like, like without the fire of God burning inside of me, how do I stay faithful in my marriage? Oh my God. How do I like navigate the responsibilities, these for you, seven little precious kids, eight, including your amazing young adult pair, like, how, how do you navigate and carry the weight that the world throws and the responsibilities and the ownership yeah. without God living inside of us Absolutely. and stoking that fire? And actually, I'll just jump into the story of uh, the road to Emmaus, the disciples walking with Jesus after yeah. he rose from the dead. They didn't recognize him. They're yeah. walking with him. He's. It says he opened, he, he revealed scripture to them. Yep. And then later they were like, um, didn't our hearts burn within us? when he was he was with us and speaking yeah. to us. How did we not even recognize? Our hearts were burning within us. And yeah. so what you just got after there is they were with him, proximity to Jesus, yeah. time with Jesus, and the word of God. He was opening, revealing scripture to them. So like it's just such an easy one-two punch of like, okay, being with Jesus, yeah. prayer, experiencing the presence yeah. of God, and then time in the word and rootedness in scripture, right? like allows us to burn with fire yeah, and make it through the, I mean, that had to be the worst day of these disciples life. They're walking this long journey on a dusty road after their hope, their savior dies. dies. And we're Jeez. walking, right? There's, I actually went to prayer this morning with a group of men and oh, it was just like the whole it. concept was like, can we infuse hope in, put your hands out in front if you need some hope from heaven, some more, like, like some, so, some of his power to say, no, I'm going to get you through this. You're yeah. going to make it. And, so I feel that right now with you and I feel it myself is like without the presence of God, without, without dependence on him, I'm not going to bring life to my family. No, dude, absolutely not. And you also even think about like all that stuff can just bog you down as a dad. You know, you're thinking about providing, you're thinking about um, just everything and anything outside of the home. And when you do that, you're non-existent. In the home. In the home. It comes is, back. The pressure oh my gosh. is about. Oh, my goodness. It's like, like someone gave me um, just – there was something that they did. That their father um, – it's super awesome that they remember this. This guy is like, what, 35, 40 years old. Um, and he spoke to me about how his father 
whenever um, he, his father literally planted a tree in his front yard and he planted a tree in his front yard um, because he did not want to ever bring anything that he goes through in, in the outside world into his home. So as that tree was, was growing or whatnot, he literally um, placed all his fears, placed all his the, the turmoil, the, the crap that happened at work, all that mess. He would literally vision himself putting it on that tree, which he strategically planted to hold that burden, walk in his home and just be daddy and be husband and and just be just come in with so much like joy and love right like santa claus bringing up bringing yeah. gifts you know but those gifts aren't monetary it's sure. gifts like the love the smiles uh the joy the the passion um the how are you doing today i really care about you as opposed to harboring all that crap and bringing it home he just left it on that tree and once he left home to go to work here we go picked up that all that mess put it on and he went off to work i thought that's just so powerful it's an anchoring visual at the end of the driveway in the front of the house absolutely yeah so how i'm trying to play out how all of us dads could could think about some tangible threshold way of i'm not gonna i'm not gonna carry this burden in yeah and expose i mean again the lives of our little ones like they, they don't need to see a perfect dad. They don't need nope. to see a dad who doesn't carry ever, you know, doesn't cry, doesn't do, that's not that. You're just saying the, the just separation of like this compared to their little hearts, this can wait till yeah. I pick it up on the way oh, out. Is that, is that what you're saying? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. But in my, in my thought, I'm thinking like, man, why even pick it up off that tree? On the way back. Lay it at his and feet. Trust him. Oh my God, right? Mm. Why allow that to just bog you down as you're traveling to work where you also need to be a light where you also need to be salt, right? Um, and just laying it down at God's feet. Like, you know what, Father? I'm not even going to pick this up. Take it. Yeah, you know? And some, sometimes even that concept of, oh, lay it at his feet. It's like, what does that actually look like to get a little more practical? Yeah. And how do we train our kids to do that when mm-hmm. it comes to their burdens? Can you think of how to make this even a little more like, no, this is something every dad can do. Is it in prayer? Is it... Uh, uh, what does it look like to like actually get rid of those burdens? The Hebrews 12, one, one and two stuff of like the yeah. sin that entangles, the burdens that weigh us down, cast them off. I think it says there yeah. in that passage. Any any like ways to take that a little more tangible for the dads? Um, I remember when uh, we, I was, we were working out at Lifetime, my wife and I, I think it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I think I have a video of it on our, on our cool. Instagram. But she's, she's walking, right? And she has this huge backpack on. And I'm like, why the heck? why am I going to let my wife carry this huge backpack cool. into the, and I like, babe, let me take your backpack. And she's like, Oh, thank you. And she takes off the backpack, super heavy. And she starts stretching like, Oh my goodness. Thank you. This, this is amazing. And I, t- we took it off and I was like, huh, it's just like God. God just wants us to just give him all the crap that we're going through, right? Give him all of the weight yeah. so that way we could feel light and and not burdensome burdensome in a way and i think a a fantastic way to kind of exercise that is visualization you know you you um was it as a man thinketh so is he um whatever whatever you uh whatever you think you'll be whatever you speak you you become um so if you're if you think the whole lay it at his feet and you actually visualize you in front of his throne with all your problems you put it in a bag and you just throw it at his feet like goodbye and just walk away. Yeah. Like I think that does something powerful to you and alleviates any um, like uh, uh, weight yeah. from you. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and the visual of that heavy backpack, I think of the book Pilgrim's Progress is a moment where the the burden rolls down the hill from the cross. Yeah. And like, yeah, we can vis- we can use that visualization and the peace that will flood in when you actually visualize, no, I don't have to carry that anymore. Yeah, absolutely. What a gift. Such a gift. It's also like the the visual of the son walking back from the, pin, uh, the, the, the pig pen headed back to the father, the prodigal son. And when yeah. the father runs to him, throws oh. his cloak around, it's like the joy flip that happened in that son from thinking I could maybe be a slave or a servant to... To oh my goodness, I get to experience sonship again and yeah. have a robe, and I'm not going to experience the shame that I thought it was going to. That's God's heart. It's not just to take the weight; it's to take the weight and lift the head of like lift your chin. Of like no, you can walk in sonship. Yep, absolutely. It's the best. So much love, brother. So it's funny. I I think about it sometimes with your grin, Moses, because I see you. I, I actually we're, we're both tall brothers, and we're both in yeah. church together. So I I'll spot you sometimes worshiping. Yeah. And 
And I also have you know, get to see your face, uh, you know, in conversations, but also through your Instagram of bringing these moments of truths, yeah. and and it just pairing these little tiny one minute moments with Moses, which I you just take a truth, right? Yeah. And you unpack it for for folks that are in the church, not in the church, doesn't matter. Like these are truths that we can actually walk in to bring more Jesus to our life, which yeah. I thank you. Absolutely, bro. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to pass that on to all of our dead awesome community oh, to make you. sure that they can follow and be encouraged by you. But there's also, I get to see in more long form, um, you actually press into the presence of God yeah. and you put your arm around your wife and you picking up your kids from the kids ministry yeah. afterwards and, and seeing your life, uh, from a, from a, not through an Instagram window, but through mm. in real life. How would you, how would you take this concept of man? I want to bring truth. I want to bring joy. I want to live into what I'm sharing with fo- like folks following you that have never met you before, yeah. and actually live into it for your family. How, how, how would you encourage us to actually like ground ourselves on truth and be looking for like you spot a truth and then you unpack it? How can we be dads who are curious that way, who are looking for what does God have for me? Now I can unpack it to my family. So that concept of like grab it onto something of God and making it more real. How would you encourage us to all do that like you do that? Um, I, what's coming to me is just uh, s- s- the search. Like, seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. I think yeah. that's the, the scripture or whatnot. Yeah. I think the, the search and the seeking, and not, not the striving, but the, just, the, just seeking him. Like, God, what do you have? What do you want? What do you want me to do? Even to the, the day by day. Like, whenever I, um, I do anything, um, what, what I love most about uh, the, Moses, um, David, I think even Joseph, um, Abraham, um, Solomon, you know, they always, before before they ever made a decision, they always consulted God. Like, God, what do you want me to do? How do I defeat? Like, even like Moses, whenever they're going to fight the Amalekites, right? I always tell the story because I just absolutely love it because you see an exam- example of just trust, obedience, and support. And I think that's huge for us as fathers, you know, as just you know, people of, of God. Um, but the, just the striving of asking God, these, the Amalekites are so experienced, big and strong, and I don't know what to do. What do you want me to do? You know, he really just seeked God and like, I need you to lead me right now. And because of that, he got what he needed to get in order for them to defeat the Malachites, you know, and, but in order for him to do that, he seeked God, he listened to God and he obeyed God. Right. And, but the thing that um, is even more powerful is, man, he got up there, but he didn't go up there alone. Right, because he couldn't have done it alone. Just like us fathers, we cannot do this thing alone. That's why having Dad Awesome is just so fantastic. Because Dad Awesome is like that Aaron and Ur up there with Moses, lifting up those hands. Mm. You know, as we strive to do what we had, that we got from God when we were seeking His face, in order for us to embody what He needs us to um, to do, in a sense. And embodiment, I think, is huge as well. Like we can go out there and teach whatever we want to teach, and this is what I learned from God or whatnot. But you gotta, you gotta be about it. You gotta be about it. Yeah, he didn't back down. He's a, he was a warrior, Moses. He's like not afraid. He stepped in with faith, but then he still took a vantage point of up top yeah. with two oh, buddies, yeah, with his hands up in worship. Yeah, they sat him on a rock. Yeah, which I that that portion, I'm like, I think part of the playfulness of God is. In, in our curiosity, he's wired us, he's created us to be curious, yeah. is like for me to like think, okay, the rock, what parallel might that be of like, oh, it's a lot less work to sit than to stand, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so his ways are easy, like he's going to provide yeah, rest. Yeah, come on. But then also the rock, like well, what's what's a firm foundation in like all of these, the word of God is like, in my mind, like, man, can we just find, grab onto scripture passages that are our rock, our, yep. our steadiness, yep. our, our rest, like all come. So it's like friends holding the arms up, perspective up, vantage point. I can see a little more of yep. the, the battle, yep. courage to even be in the battle. Yep. I think there's so many parallels for dads from, oh, that, most definitely. from that story. Absolutely, man. What does the guy do if he doesn't have an Aaron and a her, um, a dad who's maybe doesn't have those deeper friendships right now. Yeah. I mean, this morning there was men's prayer that we talked about. And then the, oh. this evening you're getting prayer. You actually have an appointment, I think, to get some deeper prayer, with yeah. the, which is amazing. Yeah, six thirty. <laughs> I can't we're, wait for soul care. We're pursuing day. it, right? The two yeah, of us, got, well, you got to pursue it. Oh, yeah, you have But to. what if you don't have those friends or those opportunities to have your hands lifted and held up high? Like, what, what do you encourage the guys? Um, go find to, it. You have to go find it. There's no way you can you can do this alone. Even you can't You can't be a father 
alone. You cannot be a husband alone. You can't be the best version of yourself alone. You have top athletes in this world and, and, and even uh, movie stars or whatever you want to call. They, everybody has a coach. Everybody has a voice coach. Everybody has a, a mental coach. Everybody has a, a, a coach on the, on the court. Everybody has a coach, um, uh, um, a nutrition coach, sure, sure. mindset. Like, sure. And in order to do so, like you, in order for them to be great, they have to do it. You know, and I know if, if it, you just can't find anything, partner up with the one and that, that's the Lord, you know, yeah. like get in, get into a closet, you know, seek him, like have that f- f- fervor or whatnot. But it's just so important. See, that's my, my heart and my, like, I, I believe this so strongly that, that if you want it, if your heart's burning with like, I want, I'm hungry to get, have brotherhood, to have mentors and I'm seeking God on my knees saying, I want that. I think God's going to give it to every guy listening. Like uh, if you true. truly are seeking and saying, but there's always excuses. <laughs> yep. There's always barriers or, or man, it's uneasiness of like, oh, to go to that group at my church or, hey, to go out to this early morning men's prayer. Like, man, I don't know if I'm going to click with those guys. Just do it. Right? <laughs> it's like, it. be hungry for it. Step into it. Yep. Yeah. And that, we are modeling for our kids too. Am I the dad who is just a solo effort? I work on my own. I don't have like guys holding up my arms. I can kind of bring my own strength. We're modeling for our kids Absolutely. and the, the importance of relationships. They're always watching. It's yeah. crazy how they're watching. Like even, um, what happened? I think my son Titus, uh, I, we were doing something and all of a sudden he said a phrase that I say, I was like, Wait, what? Dude, you're only eight, you know? But it put everything in perspective that, man, Moses, they're always watching. They're always watching. Even like as a father, you know, or as a husband, sometimes you get in those um, those arguments with your wife, sure. you know, and which is like, don't ever do it in front of the kids. Yeah, yeah but it's tough sometimes. It seeps through. Yeah. And it, it seeps through. And one, one thing that I've done, uh, I've done it before, but I've communicated to my son, Titus, my older son, nine years old, going on 10 next month. Yeah. If you don't, and I, like I would, I would, I spoke to my wife in that way. And then I turned to my son. I said, don't you ever speak to your wife that don't let you ever speak to your queen that way. I'm sorry that daddy did it in front of you, but do not ever, ever speak to her that way. Right. And if you ever see daddy do it again, you tell your daddy, Dad, we don't speak to our queen that way. So it's that accountability, you know? Um, and I mean, it happened again, and he just, Dad, we do not speak to our queen that way. And immediately my spirit was like, thank you, son. And going over and, and hugging um, my wife and just repenting, you know? But I, it, it's very important. It's very important that we we bring our kids in, you know? And I know we're supposed to, it's, it's like, it's not a, it's a show because they're watching us. They want to do whatever we, we're doing, but it's important that we we uh, give them the the um, the clearance to to direct that show a little bit as well, to, because it helps keep us accountable. You yeah. know. So this morning uh, I got to hold a five day old baby. Uh, my wife made a meal for a, a family in our church, and I brought it over. And I never thought, what a bonus that I because I'm the delivery guy, I get to hold the baby. So I get to pray over and hold this little five day old baby. Wow, a little miracle baby, beautiful. And it makes me just think back to, I know that there's dads listening right now that haven't even held their baby yet because they're brand new dads and haven't, the baby's not born yet. Or they're in that first six months. So you've got these twins that are six months. I think you just have a vantage point of five years of, um, or five older kids and now this, this back into newborn baby mode. What are some of the things as you're coaching, if, you know, if we were at your campfire pit out back with young dads that you'd be like, man, I want them to hear this. Like like this might be helpful for them in that chapter because because you have a vantage point a little more years of dad life. What, what would you want to share with those young rookie dads? You know, there's a saying that your early years are your earning years. So grind, work, 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 yes. do it. In my mind, it's like, yeah, your early years are your earning years with your kiddos, mm. you know? Um, more so in regards to just as much as you're being intentional with going to work, getting grinding, like you got, it's like you're, you're working two shifts. It's two shifts. It's not just one to just provide. And I think as fathers, as, as providers at home, it's, we put so much emphasis on I'm the provider. I got to go out. I got to do what I got to do so I can provide for my family with like the, the money and yeah. no, nah, but it, it's, it's twofold, bro. You got to provide uh, financially, but you also got to provide emotionally as well. And the only way you could provide emotionally is if you take those two shifts and those two shifts are you're going out, but you're also, you're going out to work, but you're also coming in to work. Right. It, there's no, there's no necessary like safe or rest zone. Now you're not coming home to sit on the bench. <laughs> 
nah, bro, you're in the game all day, every day. You know, that's how we're created and we can handle it. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's the um, advice that I would, I would give to, to fathers around a, around a fire pit. And before we even hit record, we talked about this, like those two sides of it. Yeah. Yeah. First, first shift. This is important providing yeah. second shift. Uh, but we talked about the difference of like that first shift where you're an employee of somebody else. Like you are replaceable, Dad. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all know this. Like, we're. we're it doesn't matter like, what your job is. It doesn't matter what you do. You are replaceable over yeah. here, and over here on the other side, you're nope. not replaceable. Like those nope. little eyes that look up at you and um, with love of you're their only dad. Yep. Where you're not the only employee. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's let's let's rock it and bring our full heart to both. Absolutely. Um, but not being on the bench. I want to leverage into that a little further. So. Dads who maybe have taken a role of uh, I'm on the bench or, hey, this season of dad life, the mom has more nurture in this season. The mom, you know, the newborns, I mean, the mom's nursing. They're just like, I can't even do some of these roles to take care of these little ones. I want to um, get after a little further off the bench in bringing our whole hearts, our presence, seeing it as game on. I'm home. I'm not resting. Uh, would you go a little further into the importance? Uh, it's so very important. If you think about the scripture um, and all things, do do everything as you're doing unto the Lord. Um, it's like, and, and we we think of that and we apply it to um, just our work ethic out of the home. But it's like uh, at home, um, all things. Yeah, all things. I'm, you'd be a fa- the best father you can be as you're doing it unto the Lord. It's like worship to God, right? In, e- even more importantly and even more special is if you're doing it while you're tired because it's like, God, I thank you for the arrows in my quiver. I'm going to sharpen them right now, right? Uh, so it's just very, very, very important that we, 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 we're intentional. We're intentional with that, that worship. And then I, I also like perfection. We'll never reach perfection. Yeah. But, it's, but knowing that, um, we still strive for perfection. Our, our job is to be more and more like Jesus and he was perfect. We will never, ever become perfect. But guess what happens when you strive for perfection? You land on excellence, you know? So being able to land on excellence as a father, um, as a husband, as a professional, like that, there's no other, no better feeling. It's the best. Yeah. And I know I'm playing off the sports metaphor a little bit of get in the game, get off the bench, because like it's, I mean, this is both of us relate on that level as well. Yeah. Um, but there's another side that guys are on the bench right now. And it's, hey, life is full. Work is heavy. I, my hand, like I, I don't have any extra margin. So I'm going to stay on the bench when it comes to taking leadership in my church or in my community or for other dads. Okay. I see you and your wife, Sarah. If there's ever a chapter that doesn't make sense to host a small group for church and bring other people into your homes and yeah. pour life into others, it would probably be your season right now. Little <laughs> twins, six month old, the, the job you yeah, have. And and it, it's like, but I see you, you're not on the bench. Your kids don't nope. see a dad and a mom who says, I'm on the bench. You're like, no, we are ministers we of serve. the gospel. We serve, we serve. And I just want you to encourage, I call it the plus three. If dads would think plus three, I can pour in the life of three other dads, of yeah. three other families, of three yeah. other men. My kids get to see a dad who's not just about taking care of the home front, but is on mission. Would you encourage us dads to get off the bench on that side of serving, loving, creating community, learning, forming a dad small group, whatever? Uh, yeah, challenge us to get off the bench on that side. So um, whenever we we wait on the Lord, right? We want the Lord to just do so much. Like, God, I need this. I need that. I need, I need you to show up in my, on my behalf. So we're waiting on God to do certain things. Whenever you go to um, a restaurant and you are being served by a uh, waitress or whatnot, what are they doing? They're, they're waiting. They're waiting, right? They're waiting for, on, on us. Um, but what is that wait? What is the action that's happening right there as they're waiting on us? They're serving, serving. us, right? So as we wait on the Lord, as we, I mean, all of us, we have dreams, aspirations. There's something that we're waiting on God to do. Uh, but it's very important that we serve him as we wait because that opens up just so many doors of, man, God, I trust you. God, I love you. God, I care about you. And God, it's bigger than me, right? It's it's not like on the back of my phone, it actually slipped out. It has, I have a, a sign that says, uh, um, it's, uh, it's not about you. Yes. It is not about us, man. Um, it's about the next generation. It's about the next 
dad um, next to you. It's about just making an influence. It's about your wife. It's about the kids. It's never about us. So being able to step out and, and be uncomfortable, be comfortable being uncomfortable, yeah. right? And and, and serving and, and, and reaching out and loving and, and caring, it goes a long way and it gives you an opportunity to be uh to be bigger than yeah. yourself mm. in a sense so yeah we take advantage of opportunities like that and i yeah. remember um growing up my father's a minister yeah. um i always had a blast whenever we had um what's it called prayer meetings yeah. at home because all the kids would come and they would go we would go play and the grown-ups would be doing their thing Joy. so i want to give my, my wife and i want to give our kiddos the same same type of um experience because we know what it did to us it locked us in um in our faith so yeah you're loving others you're filling your house with others who you're just pouring out god's love to you and you experience the love through absolutely you. Yeah. yeah would you say a short prayer over all the dads yeah dear heavenly father um i thank you for being the prime example of fatherhood. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your passion. I thank you for your tenderness. I thank you for your care. And I thank you for your protection. And also thank you for your provision. God, I pray that you may help all of us fathers to embody all of those traits, Lord, so we can be the best fathers uh, that we can be, so that we can elevate in every single area of our lives, Lord. I pray that you may continue to touch every single listener here uh, as they are on that, that, that journey up the mountain um, to, to experience just their best life, Lord. I pray that they may encounter you. I pray that they may love you. And I pray that they may trust you, but most importantly, surround themselves with support as they, as they um, carry on to where you have them to go. Lord, uh, we love you and we thank you. We pray for a tremendous blessing upon uh, Dad Awesome. Lord, I pray that you may continue to elevate it. Lord, I pray that you may continue to bless um, uh, the, the, the dog family. I pray that you may continue to use them like no other, Father. Plant them where they need to be planted. Use them like you've never used them before. Be their mouthpiece, their mindset. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>